Hello everyone, my name is Aaron with Jackson Bottom and welcome to Backyard Science. This week we are talking about entomology or the study of insects. So today I'm going to be talking with you guys about aquatic insects. Now I'm here at Westmoreland Park once again at the Johnson uh, Creek Restoration Area and it's a perfect habitat for aquatic insects. Now what's an aquatic insect you ask? Aquatic insect is an uh, insect that spends most or all of its life within the water. Now we're going to get to see a few species that you might find in ponds or lakes near you. So aquatic insects live in all kinds of habitats, from the ocean to creeks like this one, to ponds, lakes, rivers, and streams, even a bucket full of water. So there's all kinds of aquatic insects that you can find here in the Pacific Northwest. A few of the common species you're gonna find are mosquitoes, stoneflies, mayflies, dragonflies, damselflies, and one of my favorite, the caddisflies. Aquatic insects are really important to this planet. They do so many things for us that many people don't understand. For one, they feed almost every animal on this planet in some way, shape, or form. So they're a huge part of the food chain at Jackson Bottom, here at Johnson Creek, and around the world. They also help control water systems and keep them healthy by eliminating too much algae or plants or other pest insects that might cause harm to the water systems. So they also are really a great indicator of climate change. So a lot of aquatic insects require healthy, good quality water to survive. So as we pollute our planet more and more and climate change becomes a real problem, we can look at our water systems and look at our aquatic insect populations, and that's gonna give us an overall health of our ecosystem. So some aquatic insects you will see during the summertime flying around through the fields and the forests. That is because aquatic insects will go through a metamorphosis stage. And that metamorphosis, depending on the species, will turn them into a terrestrial insect or a land insect. So some examples of that would be a mosquito or the dragonfly, but other insects will stay aquatic their entire lives.
Now, how do they live underwater? Now, they have some really cool adaptations that help them do that. Some species have extruding gills, or what are called plastrons. So these gills will actually gather oxygen from the water around them and will breathe it in to their body. Now, other insects have what are called setes, and these are little hairs all along their body. And some setes will capture oxygen as they go up to the surface and bury it back down as they go underwater. So they have a bubble of oxygen held by the sete around them that they can breathe from. Pretty cool. And mosquito larvae breathe through a siphon, which is kind of like a snorkel, and that helps them breathe oxygen from the water surface. So the protection of our aquatic ecosystems and our aquatic insects is really crucial. They have so much impact on our daily lives, and without them, life would not be the same. So it's really important to watch your trash pollution. Please pick up trash that you see along the creeks or riversides, and please pick up your own trash and carry it out whenever on a hike or a neighborhood walk. And another great thing to do is when you're at home, try to minimize your fertilizer use. A lot of lawns have runoff. So when it rains, the runoff goes into streams like this and fertilizers can end up choking out the water system, giving nutrients to more and more plants. So there's a balance that we need to keep. And another thing you can do is volunteer or donate to one of your local societies. Walton River Keepers, Jackson Bottom. There's all kinds of great conservation groups out there that help keep these water systems clean and happy. So for today's activity, we're gonna do a little reusing of items that we have just lying around the house. We're gonna make a coffee Play-Doh caddis fly. So here are a few materials that you're gonna need to get things started. So how I usually make a caddis fly body is I usually make coffee Play-Doh. This is a really easy Play-Doh to make at home, and it only requires five simple ingredients. First, you're gonna need at least half a cup of some reused coffee grounds. Then, you're gonna need two tablespoons of oil, at least a half cup of salt, at least one cup of flour, and at least a half cup of hot water. Now, you're going to mix the flour and the coffee all in together. And then you're gonna slowly add in the salt, the oil, and the water as you stir. And as you stir, it'll become thicker and more like a Play-Doh consistency. You can always add more coffee grounds for a darker color if you need it. Now, next, to make the shell, you're gonna need a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll that you can cut in half. This is gonna be the outlining of your shell. So the outlining of your shell, you can decorate any way you want. And you can make with grass or sticks. This is stuff that I found in the backyard. We don't have too many rocks here. So whatever you guys have in your yard or your neighborhood, is a great thing to camouflage with because caddis flies can camouflage with whatever is most abundant within their environment. So to make the legs, you can use anything from pipe cleaners to toothpicks to even a little bendy straw that you can cut into pieces. So this project is really useful to get rid of some knickknack things you may have around the house. So once your coffee Play-Doh is thick enough, I added a little bit more flour to mine to make it extra moldable. But once it has kind of thickened and has become extra goopy, you can then begin to mold your caddis fly body. Now, it's, you can do it straight on the table, but it is going to be a lot easier, especially when you let it dry, on, to do it on a paper plate or some parchment paper. So that's gonna help it peel off a lot easier and won't stick to the table. All right, so, First, what you want to do is mold the body of your caddis fly. 
So your hands are definitely gonna get a little dirty. Now you're gonna put your hands in the coffee Play-Doh. All right, just like so. And you're gonna mold it together. Kind of push it around. Now all insects, remember, have three major body parts. A head, a thorax, and an abdomen. So you want to plop it on your plate here and you can mold a little head, a little area of thorax, and an abdomen. You can always grab more coffee Play-Doh if you need to. You can make a really big one or a really small one. It's up to you, as long as it fits within your paper tube there, all right? Now, you're going to need to let this to dry. So what you wanna do is you wanna make your head you want to make your abdomen and thorax and add your legs first so then as it dries it keeps the legs inside there all right all right so once you have your shape you're going to add your legs and your compound eyes for compound eyes i'm going to use cat food that i just found on the ground super simple so you're going to put those in here all right make sure that they have a wide enough base you're going to add six legs Remember, insects have six legs. And just like so. So once you have your legs in, you can also add small antenna, or I have here a little bread um, bag tie that I'm gonna insert into the mouth here to act as jaws. So you can see the big mandibles there that the caddis fly has now. So once you have your caddis fly made, you're gonna set it outside and let it dry. So you want the coffee Play-Doh to become hard and crispy. So when you touch it, it's gonna be really firm, just like the exoskeleton of an insect. So while your caddis fly dries outside, you can then make your camouflage and protective shell. So, like I was saying earlier, you can use any kind of items that you may find in your backyard or your neighborhood. I have a lot of grass here, some flower petals, and some cherry flower stems. So these are gonna be great to add along the outside of my protective shell. So all you're gonna need to do is use either a glue stick or some Elmer's glue here and you're just gonna make little lines on the outside of your shell. So you're just gonna use some glue. You can use a glue stick as well, as long as the items aren't too heavy. And you're just gonna make little ribbons along the first part of the shell. You don't wanna do the whole shell at once, because then I'm having to improvise and paint the glue on. As long as there's enough glue on the outside of the shell, everything should stick nicely. So you want to make sure to spread that glue out. All right. Spread it out. Make sure there's somewhat of a thick layer. Not too thick, because you don't want the cardboard to get too wet. And then you can apply your camouflage. Now you can do it piece by piece or you can do big chunks like I'm doing here. Especially if you have a lot of glue, the bigger chunks will stick a little easier. Then, to pat those down too so that they stick all right and then 